Hello, everyone. Here it is. I'm coming at challenging you, Jay. Do you hear me, Jay? Yes, yes. Beautiful. Uh, I'm challenging you with mathematics. This book, which I picked, somehow is supposedly followed by a billion people, more than a billion people, but changed the history. This is uh, one of the book acknowledges this. Uh, by whom? Michael Hart. He was a Chicago professor. He had several criteria to include. It's very funny and very naive that someone like Mr. Adib, he would do such a mistake. Uh, the book you mentioned about the 100 most influenced people mentioned the names of criminals like Jankis Khan, Hitler, etc. So I believe Muhammad he fit there. However, that book never mentioned uh, the names of people who did a lot of great work. Like uh, in, in India, there is a very famous lady. Her name is Mother Teresa. She was the reason to save millions of people from hunger. But her name is not there. Uh, so this is a very funny, uh, uh, foolish argument with my respect to Mr. Adib. Now, here he will mention that uh, how many times the word moon appear? Do you know? Uh, no, I do not know. You tell me. Let us listen and let us love together. How many times the word day appear in the Quran? Do you know? Jay, do you know? No, no, Jay, give me, give me a number. Do you know? And Jay look around like, okay, what, what, what this guy is going to say? Uh, no, give me a number. Give me a number. Oh, okay. Okay, what? 365? Thank you! 365. I have a surprise for you, Mr. Adib. Obviously, you never read your book. And you are the rest, the same as the rest of the Muslims who have no idea what they are talking about. Include the most influential persons in history. And in top 100, he put Muhammad's name. Whether you like Muhammad or not, Muhammad was guided by this book according to the very book. He was misguided. He didn't know what his faith, what his book. He was misguided. He was guided by this very book, by this very revelation. And he changed the history to the good. But later, of course, like the history of Christianity, the religious clergymen and idol worshipers, they distorted the message. They started practicing exactly what is the opposite. Quran perhaps is the most read book, but it is the, mo the least understood, unfortunately, and the most betrayed book in the world. When you look at the Quran, let me give you a few examples. The word month, shahr, you will find in singular form exactly 12 times. Mr. J, do you know how many times the word moon mentioned in the Quran? Do you know how many times the word day mentioned in the Quran? Uh, sorry, not the word moon, sorry. The word shahar. Shahar means month, by the way, Mr. J. Do you know how many times the word shahar mentioned in the Quran? No, Mr. J. Uh, uh, no. It's 12 times. Are you sure? Yes, 12 times. How the Quran know that? It's a miracle. Do you know how many times, Mr. J, the word they mentioned in the Quran? Um, uh, Coincidence? Possible. The word day, yawm, in singular form, as yawm means day. How many times do you think we find in the Quran, J? Give me a number. I don't hear you. Uh, Moderator, please uh, let me hear him. We have go uh, ahead, five. Tell me. Go ahead. Tell me. Can you hear him, Jay? Go ahead, respond, Jay. Yes, just go ahead. Tell us. We have uh, five minutes left. Okay, uh, you didn't say it. I want you volunteer a number for the word day. Come on. Anybody got a number? 365. Yes, you got it. Oh. This very um. Uh, come on, give me a number, give me a number, guess, guess, Mr. J, <laughs> give me a number, give me a number. 
Okay, mm -hmm. 365, thank you, 365. Now, I don't know if Mr. J read my book, Quran and Science in Depth, uh, because he asked the same question I asked, uh, or maybe he's watching my videos. If the Muslims, they have 365 days in the Quran, why they are following the moon calendar, which is not 365 days, which is 11 days shorter. However, I'm going to show you that what this guy was saying is nothing but a fabrication. I think, I believe he is a victim. You know, many of, many of those people, they look like growing people, but they are victims of the lies of others. Like, I'm assuming he don't speak Arabic. And this is why he was not able to do the test by himself. But actually, if you, if you do the test in English, you will see that this, 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 there's, a, there's a problem here. Let us go and search for the word first. He said the word shahar. Shahar, which supposedly, according to him, he told Mr. J, do you know what shahar mean? Uh, J, um, no. Mean month. Uh, let me educate you, Mr. Uh, Edib. The word shahar does not mean month. Today is used as a word mean month because the Arab, they took it from the Aramaic. The word shahar is mean, it's, it means moon. Moon. This is why the Quran says that the months of Allah are a 12 moon. All right? 12 moon. They are not 12 month. They are 12 moon. There is nothing, the whole Quran, there is not even the word month appear once. The word shahar, if we type it now, let us see how many times it appeared, as he said. He said, 12 is it I don't know that's weird I never heard of that before if we were, if we search for the word shahar exact phrase which means exact exact word the same word he mentioned in the TV enter it's coming twice only if I search all the words which mean all options of the word shahar like if we add L etc is going to come 17. So where do you get this uh, 12 number from? Where do you get this from? Secondly, the word Qamar is Shahar and the word Shahar is Qamar. However, when they speak about the word Qamar, you know, uh, this is the, let us say, this is the Arabic uh, word for the moon. The word Shahar is an Aramaic word and has nothing to do with the month. The Aramaic, when they say, and, you know, for them, the shahar mean have many meanings. One of them, one of it is timing. Like the moon is coming, it's mean a new new month will start, but it's not a month. It's not a month. This is why here, as, as we see in front of us, as an example, this verse, chapter two, verse one eighty-five, it says, "Shahr Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن." It doesn't say month of Ramadan. It says the moon of Ramadan. The word shahar, it is not a word mean month. If you read the Muslim translation, all of them they translate the word shahar as month. Why? Because they are translating the word as it is used today by the Arab today. First, this is not an Arabic word. Secondly, this is an Aramaic. Number three, it does not mean month. It means moon. All, all, you know, like, uh, 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 Al-Hajju Ashhurun Ma'lumat. The moons, the moons of the Hajj are known. They are known. Uh, the sacred moon. There is a timing. It's about a timing where the moon appear. This is what we call a sacred moon, which means a second month, but it's not a month. And to prove my point. When the Muslims, they fast, do they fast 28 days as a moon month? No. They fast by the appearance and disappearance of the moon. Which means, when the moon appear, the Muslim fast. Until the moon, the moon will go and disappear, and until the moon come back. It, it doesn't matter if it's 28 days, 29 days, 30 days. They will not fast again until the moon appears. So it's a moon. It's not a days. When we say month, we are talking about specific number of days which we agree upon. So if I say July is a 31 days, 
That means when the 31 days of this July is over, July is over. In the moon month, or if we can say the, the, the shahar, there is no days. It is about the moon appearance only. So if there was a cloud in that day, I could not see the moon. I am not done with the month yet. When the moon appears, I will see the month is over, which means the moon come, the moon go. But Mr. Uh, uh, Adib, he is the same as all. Uh, uh, like here, the women, when they have, uh, you know, they are divorced, they have to wait for four months, according to the translation. But the fact is for four moon. Four moon. So four moon, the moon will come round. Somebody will say, isn't it the same? It's about time. No, no, because if you say month, you are talking about specific days. You can you can count them. In here, in this case, you cannot count. If there's any obstacles between you and the moon, the moon, then the month is not over yet. You have to see the moon. By seeing the moon, the moon start. By seeing the moon, the moon, the, 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 the month over. Not by counting days. I, I hope my, uh, uh, you know, uh, my explanation is clear. Now, the word shahar, by the way, means uh, uh, like uh, famous, something nobody can hide. This is why the word shahir is coming from the word shahar, which means moon. So if you are a person who became famous, shahir is the same as someone, he is the moon, because the moon, nobody can hide it. All right? Now, we, let us go to other thing he said. He said the word day. Do you know how many times the word day appeared, Jay? Mm, um... Um, I'm not sure really. Like, help me. <laughs> Let us type the word day here and you will see the disaster. According to Mr. Adib, the word day appear in the Quran 365 days, is it? Enter. Oops. 415 time. Where is the 365? You know what? I will make it any word. Uh, sorry, I will make it exact word. Forget about uh, exact phrase. Here we go. I will give it all the options. Maybe that will fix it and make it 365. I will try. Search. 211 days. 211. Do you see it? So all words. 415. Any word is going to be the same. 415. So, if we make it the exact phrase is going to be 211. If we make it any word, it's going to, to be 415. So, where do you get this uh, lie about the, uh, the, the, uh, the 365 days? I mean, seriously. This is a shame. And you have a book written about this miracle? And based on this miracle? Well, this is a shish kebab miracle destroyed in two seconds. I advise people to read my books, The Deception of Allah and Quran and Science in Depth, because you will see that what Muslims claim to be a miracle is nothing but a lie. It's a joke, actually. It is the opposite. I feel jealous, actually, that Jay, he was debating this guy. If I was there, I will make him, you know. <laughs> anyway, this guy will be in my show in this coming, not this Wednesday, the Wednesday after. So I hope he will not mention the science of the Quran. Otherwise, I will make him be sorry. I hope he will not do so. Coincidence possible. The word day, yawm, in singular form, as yawm means day. How many times do you think we find in the Quran, Jay? Give me a number. I don't hear you. Uh, moderator, please uh, let me hear him. We have go uh, ahead, five. Tell me. Go ahead. Tell you. Me. Can you hear him, Jay? Go ahead, respond, Jay. Yes, just go ahead. Tell us. We have uh, five minutes left. Okay, uh, you didn't say it. I want you volunteer a number for the word day. Come on. Anybody got a number? 365. Yes, you got it. This very, this very book that I saw in the middle of the street which is really people who supposedly follow him, follow this book, are backward, oppressor, misogynist, but I see this book is very different what they are preaching and practicing. And this book, these just two words pulled my attention. 
is in the library, if you pick hundreds of books, you will not find any of them has this interesting uh, harmony between astronomical fact and the frequency of these two words. Let me continue. In 1969, when the United States landed the moon, my friend Dr. Khalifa wanted to translate... And this book is nothing but a bunch of lies, Mr. Edip. I hope I will see you this coming, not this Wednesday, the Wednesday after, debating me, and I hope you will not back down if you watch this video. Uh, I want to see really how he can prepare himself to talk to me. Now, the coming topic we will talk about is about the month of Ramadan. This guy, he is one of those who reject the Hadith in order to protect Islam. But you think you can protect Islam by accepting the Quran? You are a big time mistaken. And you have no idea what you are following. Now we are here to save you Muslims, not to insult you. Even though our talk it might sound like insulting, but in fact we are rescuing you and we are doing you a big favor you cannot imagine. Written I to translate the Quran and then when he translated the first chapters, which is seven verses, he came across ALM, three letters, which Muslims throughout centuries, they didn't know the meaning of these letter combinations or number combinations, which initialized 29 chapters, 14 letters, 14 different combinations in the beginning of 29 chapters. And then he, he put them in the computer, second generation computer, mainframe computers, and he got the frequency of these letters. His initial observation was these letters are the most frequent in the chapters they initialize. For example, the letter Q, Qaf, in chapter of 50, in the beginning of chapter 50 and 42 is the Hamiz. I know that Muhammad himself wrote the book because the Quran says, but it was a revelation to him. The stories about Muhammad was illiterate, could not write, is a big lie, one of the biggest lies they agreed upon. The Quran says the opposite, and I prove it beyond doubt that Muhammad was literate. He wrote the revelation first, and then this revelation is letter by letter protected. This 19... Hello everyone, peace of Christ to all. In this video, we will show you how like, we expose one more of the deception of Muslims regarding scientific, amazing miracles in the Quran. You know, first this guy, he says, this book, there is no way it's changed. When the fact, there is many Muslims, and we can show tons of proofs that even there's other Qurans, even did not start with Bismillah. And Bismillah was something added to the Quran, is not part of the Quran, because it doesn't make sense that Allah speaks, says in the name of Allah, when He is the one who is talking. However, let us focus on what is in the Quran today, and let us see how we can prove that Muslims, they are deceived, and they deceive others. This guy here, he's trying to make a statement. He actually, he's copying Rashad Khalifa, uh, who claimed to be a prophet of Allah, or messenger of Allah and the Muslims killed him for such a claim. He, he, he paid his life for it because it's a lie, and even the Muslims did not let it go. However, so let us prove this lie again in different way. The Muslims killed him because he did, he, in order to, uh, to complete the, uh, the number 19 together in the Quran, he had to delete some verses. That's why the Muslims decided to kill him, because his Quran is different from the Quran they have. However, in here, we prove the, the deception in different way. You see, in the verse number one, he says, that the first uh, verse is equal to number 19. The fact this is absolutely fabrication. Uh, we start from the first word. The first word in the Quran is Bismillah. Bism, Allah, which is two words. Bism, which means in the name. Allah is Allah, right? So uh, Bism actually, in here it appears as a three letters, but the fact Bism is a four letters. There's an alif here is deleted. So why he did not count it, uh, I don't blame him, because the, the, the Muslims, when they wrote their Quran, they are trying to make it easier to pronounce, so they took off the letter A. Otherwise, it is Bismillah, 
وليس not in the name or باسم الله. So it is just to make it a lighting speech. And you know, just to prove that I'm not the one that's coming with this. This is the official website of one of the biggest mullahs for Dood. Uh, his name is uh, Al-Sha'rawi. Very well famous. He attacked Christianity always. He said in here, he's saying, and it, the alif from the word bism deleted for enlightening the pronunciation. So there is an alif there. It is deleted. So the Quran is not really coming the way they are. Because written, the, remember, the Quran was given to them in Arabic as it is, not in Arabic as it's written today. Which means, if they make it enlightened by taking the alif, uh, the, the letter A uh, out, that is not what the Quran, still the Quran says the word bi ism, not bism. So, for enlightening, they make it this way. And this is a proof that the Muslims, they have no problem to corrupt their Quran. Because if Allah give it to you with alif, why you take the alif? To make it enlightened and nicer, to pronunciation that is not an excuse to change the word of your God all right so uh, so he is actually the title here has if has if ism alif min ism which means deleting the, the letter alif from the word ism which means bism here is you see this is the correct word actually all right so when you say uh, b you have to add alif after it and that would make it b ism ism is the original word Bism is the word uh, uh, connected to B within the Quran, which means in the name. In the name. B in here, the letter B present uh, uh, in. Ism, the name. Not sim, because if we take B from the letter, from the word, then the, the, the word will turn to be sim. And sim means sim, which means mean poison. This is not what the word is about. So it is Bism, and he is saying here, we the, the, the Muslims, they took it off. For enlightening the pronunciation. Now we continue to the other uh, deception in this verse about the number 19. In here, if you look at the video, you will see that he count a Rahman one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. The fact, if we go in the Quran, we will find the following that he did miss the Alif. After the letter mean, this Abdul maybe he's ignorant, like he's a prophet. He do not know that this is a letter alif here. It might look short, look funny, but this is an artistic way to enlighten the pronunciation. But the alif is there. It is Ar Rahman with alif, not without alif. But the Muslims, you see, in, in Arabic, there is there we have fatha. We have many verbs to to change the sound, but there is letters who they are part of the word. And this is alif. This is not uh, evolved to change the the the, the, the word uh, pronunciation. I mean uh, sound. This is a letter, and this is why it's written here. It's, it's it's showing actually. You can see it very little one. You see, I'm highlighting the thing. You see it in the top of the line. That is an alif. And actually, in the same page for the same scholar, we will see again the same story. He is explaining why the the name or Ar Rahman. The alif is coming short and hardly pronounced. Here we go. Question number seven. Has uh, alif noon. Why we delete the alif before the letter noon in the word ar rahman? You see the word, the correct word here. You know, this is the word, the one the Muslims they, they come to to us with the Quran, but the fact it is ar rahman with alif. Not the way it is here, which means it's the correct word. Let me show you the correct word as it is. This is the official government website of Saudi Arabia. This is the correct word. It's Ar Rahman. Ar Rahman with Alif. In here, it's, it's coming, which is correct, by the way, uh, uh, as, a, as a short way to say the word. But still, if you want to count how many letters, you have to add the Alif because the Alif is still there as you see it. So, if we say Ar Rahman in the Quran, it's coming the Alif very short, but you, you hear me pronouncing the, 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 the Alif, Ar Rahman. Ar Rahman. This is not a Fatha only, it is a letter. There is an Alif here. The Fatha for the M, Ma, and then there is a letter, Rahman. So, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. 
So here simply, there's a letter is missing from the, from the count he did, and that made them two numbers missing, and that will make the number total is 21. And that gun goes for everything after that, you know, uh, because the word Ar-Rahman appeared many times in many verses, uh, you know, because the Quran simply is a book who keep repeating itself. You see the same Ar-Rahman appear in verse number one, appear in verse number three, in the same in, in the same chapter, you know. So uh, uh, when Muslims they try to come with a miracle, it's not there. It's very funny, but those things they can work for those who do not speak Arabic. And I hope I made it clear for you. So, however, a Rahman. If I write a Rahman, by the way, this way uh, in Arabic, if I want to write a letter, people will make fun of me because I have to write it with alif. And we can prove that easy actually. Let us see. I just type the word Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim with Alif and you will see how many times Muslims they repeat the word as coming with Alif not without the Alif because this is right away this is the correct way to write the word Ar-Rahman it is uh, you know the, in the Quran it just coming in a let us say an artistic way and uh, actually the A still here there is not disappearing it's still there but they make it short as you see here so even this, they are not even taking it off like I can say he have an excuse not to count the alif here because he do not know because the alif is not appearing we pronounce it but we don't see it right but the fact it is there uh, if you want to say the word correctly it is bism not bism bism is very false arabic however the muslim they corrupt their book just to make it nice rather music they took the alif off they make it without alif and they make it bism but the fact it is bism and this is the accurate and correct Arabic word. Here, they have no excuse to say there's no alif at all because simply it's even written there in the front of their eyes. If it's short or big, doesn't make any difference. This is an artistic way of, of writing in Arabic. But the, the, the alif is there, and I just showed you the proof from their own uh, website. Uh, so when we see it this way, we accept it to be correct. Why? Because who dare to say the, the Quran is wrong? Who dare to say you cannot do that? If those people make the word bism without alif, who dare to say the Quran today is wrong to write it this way? This is how read it before Muslims they have to follow. So now it became uh, uh, something very normal for Muslims to accept it. But when the fact it is bism, not bism, bism is wrong. Uh, same for a Rahman, you know, who are you to make it enlightening or to make it heavy or to make it, if Allah, he made it this way, leave it this way, if this is the book of God. Secondly, when somebody says the Quran never been changed, I want to ask you, uh, why the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim does not appear in all over the Quran, it appear only in the front of some part of the Quran, simply because the writer of the Quran, he added this statement. In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, you know, because if you look at this statement, at the, at the verse here, uh, let me go to translation of Yusuf Ali. All right, Yusuf Ali translation. There is no point from repeating the same sentence twice. In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, Most Merciful, praise be to Allah, the Gracious, etc. Most Gracious, Most Merciful. Like, come on, you know, what are you talking about? And you will notice actually, by the way, here, they, trans they, they, they corrupt the translation because verse number three, it doesn't say most gracious, most merciful. You know, uh, uh, only it says Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. It doesn't say most. There is no word most. It says the gracious, the merciful. Where do you get the word most from? However, Muslim translation is a fabrication of the Quran. So if he just said he is the most merciful, most gracious, why he want to say it again? It just two seconds after. It doesn't make sense. Simply because this one was an addition to the Quran and never been part of the Quran. This is why you know we can show many uh, uh, proofs that other Qurans uh, uh, didn't agree with the Quran of Uthman because simply one of the disagreement they did not have in the name of Allah. Actually, they don't even have. The, the whole chapter itself, the whole chapter is not considered as a part of the Quran. And 
uh, let me show you the book. This is a very Islamic website, and the the leader of this uh, organization, his name is Sheikh Muhammad Saleh al -Munjad. You can search everywhere, actually. He says here the the differentiation of about between the scholars about considering the 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 chapter of Al Fatiha uh, or the the uh, the start of Al Fatiha uh, is part of the Quran or not, or it is a corruption of the Quran or not. And here, actually, not only it's about that first verse; it's about all the chapter is not even considered. However, in here, let us concentrate in the first verse. He, they are saying here the reason uh, some uh, some, of the, some of the scholars don't consider it as part of the Quran. Uh, he says here they are they, they have differentiation of accepting it or not. Uh, because he, she, it is a part of every surah of the Quran, or it is only part of Al-Fatiha, or it is not at all. See how confused they are? Is it part of the Al-Fatiha chapter? It is part of every chapter of the Quran, or it is not part of any at all. And then they say to you that we know we sure the Quran never been changed. And the funny here, he says, if it is part or not, this is, will not be considered as a corruption of the Quran. How, how is that? How, how, if it's part or not, you will not consider it as a corruption? Because if it's not, you just added something to the Quran, which is not in the Quran. And if you are adding it for many verses in the Quran, many chapters, it means you, you, you have adding, you are adding verses, words of claiming to be the word of God to the Quran everywhere, but it's not. And here and here, actually, it's more funny. They say that in chapter of Bara'a, uh, the uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim is not from the Quran, for sure. So why you add it? <laughs> he said all the scholars agree that it's not part of the Quran. So why you add it? It's very funny when the Muslims try to fool us with their Quran and their numbers and their miracles, when this is a book of idiots, made for idiots by an idiot. Thank you very much. Follow with me one more video.